Um, Larkin was called the first Philippines' first internet service provider, where he created a video streaming solution that was used by Ateneo in its first ever webcasted graduation ceremony. But before he joined Voyager, um, he was actually a digital consultant in Australia, helping startups and SMBs on their digital strategy and online marketing. So while in Melbourne, he also pursued his graduate studies at RMIT University. His passion for innovation pushed him to come back to the Philippines, thank you very much, to be part of the digital unit of PLDT Inc. that drives the exploration and creation of disruptive services for the rapidly changing digital world. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Dindo Marzan. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm Dino, and I'm from Voyager Innovations, the digital unit of PLDT and Smart. Um, I'll be discussing some items and case studies about content marketing for the masses. Usually in the Philippines, referred to as MASA, sometimes judges, sometimes um, uh, other people who who appreciate the likes of Ipulaga and uh, So these are the MASA segments that we're talking about. Um, quick information about our company. Um, Janelle mentioned earlier what Voyager is, and Hatch is basically under Voyager. It's a mobile solution service provider. We both handle offline and online. So that's actually what I'm gonna tackle about. More on the offline part, because I'll show you this illustration. This um, this word cloud obviously show it shows everything that we do currently, whether in digital or online. And you'll see here nothing talks about offline. Nothing is about feature phones. We're all into the sexy stuff. Some things that would be viral, that would be talked about, that would be passed on. Because Seriously, most of the conferences and most of the seminars that we attend talk about digital. It's all about digital, uh, all CMO should be digital, quite a bit technical, uh, they have to be more innovative, it's all about that. But the truth of the matter is, everyone is already doing a fantastic job. And as Carla mentioned earlier, no one is an expert. We're all learning. It's a continuous learning of what can be done digitally and online. The thing is, we haven't noticed that we're actually alienating a big chunk of the market. We, we keep on targeting the smartphone users, the digital users, or the digital millennials, but what about the rest? I'll give you some stats. We have 101 million population in the Philippines, and I'm gonna zoom in the Philippines because that's basically my part here. I'm not from Europe, I'm, I think I'm the second Filipino presenting here. So, Mobile connections from 119 million people. It's even more than the population. Because, you know, it's it's a trend here to have a dual SIM cell phone, right? You have one, it's either you have a prepaid, you have a postpaid. You have prepaid so that um, your wife won't know your calls, or postpaid so that your company will pay for it as a service unit. So, in terms of smartphone users, the penetration is 47%. Now, where is 53%? It's actually the feature phone users. This account for 50 53% of the population. Now, and if I'm gonna use how we segment our customers in Smart, in Voyager, in PLDT, these are the those with the personas of basic needs, who are price sensitive, and these are the traditional families. Uh, mostly, there's um, one purchase decision maker, probably the mom or the dad, but obviously it's a household expense that is being um, considered, and these are in the, the, uh, the socioeconomic levels of C to DE. Some more stats to drill down further: 53% are feature phone users, 47% are smartphone users. That 53% is something that we should not disregard. So the question is, how do we reach them more effectively? With all the things that we're learning from these various trainings conferences, I think nobody talks about how to reach the feature phone users anymore. 
But mind you, there are certain innovative brands, trailblazers, who know the reality. They step back, they got snapped back to reality and say, hey, oh nga pala, we have all this mass number of people at, the, at these socioeconomic levels who need to know more about our brand or our product. So I'm going to show you the first case study that we did. Um, this is, of course, with the help of SMART and um, the collaboration with their unit before, which is SMART Mobile Ads. Wow, there's something that I can do aside from Snapchat, aside from Facebook, aside from all these digital-centered um, initiatives. The result was not that bad at all. As a, uh, from, from almost 100, uh, 1 million reach, 10% actually responded. And that's not, if you know your numbers, you, you are all marketers here, this is not bad at all. And if you're reaching a, a type of market segment such as the feature phone users or the moms, C to D E. This is something really good. And you can do this for any brands. Here's another one. And Unilever, I have to mention Unilever is really an innovative brand. Up sound, please. <laughs> So there were three webisodes, uh, sorry, there were three radio series or episodes that were done for the Surf Club. Um, surf Club is actually, uh, it's called an opt-in base of the actual surf brand. Um, there's more than one million members of this. And with, with the collaboration with Unilever, Surf Club, and Mindshare, we were able to create this um, base so that these are actually the loyal followers and the fans of Surf Club. I guess brought about by Lumen that time as well. So that was a creative um, execution that really uh, was successful and we, we just leveraged on that brand equity. Um, content is highly engaging with 77%. People really listened to the, to the radio area. So the bottom of the pyramid is very important as I've mentioned. We have to reach these people who are not capable of actually having a, an unlimited data on a daily basis. The social class distribution as of 2015, E and D are 50 million already. And it was predicted that by 2030, 36 million Filipinos would be at the bottom of the pyramid. Total spend of Filipinos is 3 trillion a year. 
and the featured phone social echo class is actually 80% of that. Mind you, this is a number that we should not disregard. It's, of course, not as, as easy as it looks, but obviously you can start with mobile. What's good about the Philippines is it's a mobile first country. Before, so, some of the people in the Philippines skip the computer stage. They don't have a computer, they jump immediately to mobile phones. And that, that mobile phone was their first experience of internet. And that's a good thing about this, this business, the, this, the, the good thing about this market. In emerging markets such as the Philippines, all marketers here, innovators, media agencies, um, brand managers, become very innovative and creative at the same time in terms of reaching these types of market. With the scarcity of, of infrastructure, of capabilities, which was mentioned earlier as well because the internet connection here in the Philippines, and it's so sad that it's gonna come from me, but it actually sucks. It actually sucks. Um, compared to the first world countries like Australia, London, Japan, Korea, we're so far behind. But the beauty, the beauty of that is we become really good at what we do as marketers, as brand managers. This leaves the majority of the cell phone user um, population unable to access internet. So even though you have a very good content that you're gonna put on Facebook, YouTube, or wherever, if that particular segment or market segment cannot even view it, then what's the purpose? How would you get that 1 million likes? So the last thing that I wanna share here is about the internet penetration. The, the main reason why it's low here is basically, first, limited infrastructure. And believe, believe me, even the 5 peso unlimited Facebook is something, something that is very costly to a certain user as well. Um, the low rural purchasing power, even the capability, some, uh, the internet is not available in some rural areas, in some provinces. Um, majority of the people this is all, all obviously is in Metro Manila. So what do we have now? We know that the smart the smartphone penetration is increasing. We know that everyone wants to go online. Unfortunately, on the flip side, they see that the data plans or the data packages are quite costly, and at the same time, the infrastructure, the capabilities are not available across the country nationwide. So what if what if you could actually hit two birds in one stone? What if you could address you could address that scarcity of mobile internet connection, be creative at the same time by no by use by using content marketing. And at the same time use certain technologies to make sure that you target your audience. So I'm gonna end my presentation with, with this very good campaign. It just so happens that it's from Smart. So here you go. Man, traffic in Manila is really something else. We're spending way too much time on the road getting from one place to another. I hear you, buddy. It's a hassle. It's like just getting to work is a job in itself. Prepaid subscriber, it's a good night to be stuck on C5 or Ensa. My news feed is blowing up. People in traffic are getting ways notifications, text messages. Mark. 
way of of making the traffic uh, situation a bit good. Um, at the same time, it's a good way to alleviate the broadband divide, the digital divide, because by giving one GB of data, imagine you can do a lot already. And at the same time, it it's really good that you actually collaborate with other other people in terms of using technologies available at hand. So in, in that in that campaign, we took care of the geofencing technology, but everything is, was from smart. And they used the, the results for their content marketing as well. I believe this was just um, released last week and it has already more than 100,000 views combined from YouTube and YouTube and Facebook. So to summarize, in terms of content marketing tips for mobile, one, it's all about content. It's still, it's true, content is still key. Content should be engaging, thought-provoking. It should let your consumers tell your brand story. As you, as you can see in the three case studies that I've showed earlier, uh, for Ladies' Choice, it was about the moms. And then for the Surf Club, it's um, relating to them. There are stories about OFW, stories about their families. So those things are very important when you create a content. Um, you could be very frugal in, expend, in, in spending your 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 A and P budget because you could hire freelancers and not necessarily go to top production houses as as was as David discussed earlier. Because there are two ways to skin the cat. Obviously, it could be through the normal YouTubers and just commission them to create content for you nat through native advertising, or you could um, get high grade production houses and create something really glossy, just like that um, ad about Breeze, which is very touchy. In terms of platform, here's the good news. In terms of platforms, you don't have to create your own platform. There are several platforms available already. Um, in terms of content distribution, again, I just want to reiterate that there's more to there's more to Facebook, there's more to Google, there's more to creating websites or mobile apps. There are other means to reach your target market. You, and especially if your target market is at the bottom of the pyramid, which are the feature phone users, there are still technologies and platforms that you can use. So with that, um, thank you, and hopefully I could answer your questions or, uh, later. Right.